Hello, thank you for joining me live with PESI today. My name is Christina Furnival. I am a mom to two young kids. I am a licensed professional clinical counselor and the author of the social emotional how to children's book series, Capable Kiddos. The first book in the Capable Kiddos series was released in September of 2021. And it's called The Not So Friendly Friend, How to Set Boundaries for Healthy Friendships. What we're doing here today is celebrating the second book in the Capable Kiddos series called Fear Not, How to Face Your Fear and Anxiety Head On. And today is the launch day for this book. Besides reading this book to you in a little bit, I will also be sharing a little bit about myself, about the Capable Kiddos series, and about anxiety and how we can help shape our children's relationship with anxiety. As I said, I'm Christina Furnival, and I am an LPCC. I've been in the field since 2009, and I've had the fortune to work in a variety of settings. I've worked in a domestic violence center when I was going through graduate school in Nashville, Tennessee. I also worked at an outpatient clinic where I saw children and adult clients, and I've worked in San Diego for a large nonprofit teaching parenting education classes and providing one-on-one -on -one behavioral support for youth and their families. Before I became a mom, I also worked in community mental health at a hospital program for their outpatient clinic, supporting youth ages five to 21. And now I provide telehealth in the evenings to adult clients. So I've seen and heard a lot and I've helped clients kind of with the gamut of mental health concerns. When I worked in the community mental health setting with youth, one of my favorite tools to support our children was to use books. I loved that I could teach them meaningful and important lessons through the indirect route of a story. And then I could also send the story home with them to share with their families, which provided consistent messaging in the therapy space and in the home space. The Capable Kiddos book series is written in this way that it is perfect for the therapy space, but it also fits right in, in the classroom and at home. My goal with the Capable Kiddos series is to support children to understand themselves better to navigate challenges confidently, and to have the agency and power in their life to live the life that they want. I've, um, I've been working the past two years on, on these books with the PESI publishing team. I want to thank all of them for helping me in my journey into authorhood. We have taken what are really complex topics and we've synthesized them and concentrated them into simple and clear stories that are still rich and meaningful. And fear not, the book that I'm going to read here for you in a few minutes today is on the topic of anxiety and fear. The CDC recently reported that from 2016 to 2019, American youth ages three to 17, of that age range, 9% of our American youth are suffering from diagnosed anxiety and 8% of our American youth ages three to 17 who did not have diagnosed anxiety were still suffering from anxiety problems. That is a lot of our kids. And since I said it's from 2016 to 2019, we all know what's happened these past two plus years. We've lived through and we are living through a global pandemic. So it's easy to imagine that the rates of anxiety in our youth are even higher. With that knowledge at hand, it's in our power to support our youth to shift their thinking and their perspective on their relationship with anxiety. So I'm going to give you an example. It's a kind of a visual example of how anxiety can impact us. And there are four kind of key takeaways that I want you to have. The first one is that anxiety and fear are natural and protective emotions in response to danger. So they are meant to be helpful. And if we can think about anxiety in this way, we can acknowledge that it's trying to do good and then we can decide, the second point, if it's information that is factual or not. So it is information, it is not concrete fact, and we get to, decide, get to decide what we do with it. The third takeaway is that it can get overactive and oversensitive. And so we can stop and think, is this something that is really a danger or is it not? And along with that is the fourth point, that we can tolerate the anxiety. We can tolerate the discomfort and we can use coping skills to do so. So the scenario that I wanna paint, the picture that I wanna paint for you is a story from my own house. This morning I had toast for breakfast and I like my toast just a little bit extra toasty. 
which means that the toaster produces a little bit of extra smoke. Our fire alarm is right there in the kitchen. And sometimes it goes off, sometimes it doesn't. Today it didn't. But the fire alarm is known for going off when I'm making toast. So if we consider a fire alarm to be our anxiety, a little bit oversensitive maybe, it might blare and start ringing its alarm when I'm making toast. Now, if I'm someone who has severe anxiety and it's oversensitive and I listen to everything that it says and I take what it tells me as truth, the second that fire alarm goes off, I might run out of my house. I might say, oh my gosh, fire alarm equals fire equals I'm in danger and I need to go. But if I can shift my thinking about the fire alarm or my anxiety, I can say the alarm's going off. So let's say that's our anxiety. My body's feeling nervous. My heart is beating really fast. I'm feeling jittery. I'm feeling symptoms of anxiety right now. I can take that and I can say, ooh, I'm anxious. It means something's gonna go wrong. Or I can say, what is my body trying to tell me? And I can try and get curious about it. So with the fire alarm example with the toaster, I can say, oh my gosh, the fire alarm is going off. Is there a fire? I can get curious and examine my environment, examine myself and say, you know what? There's not, I'm just making toast. And I can recognize that the fire alarm is doing its job. It's there to protect me. It's there to keep me safe from the danger of a fire in the same way that I can acknowledge that with my anxiety. Thank you, anxiety, Try and keep me safe, but nothing's really going wrong right now. And I don't need to take what you're telling me as truth. Also, that fire alarm is going to go off when it's good and ready to. I could maybe unplug the batteries or, or try and destroy it, but the reality is it's on the wall, it's way up high, and it's going to run its course. The same thing is true with anxiety. There's a normal curve that anxiety goes on, a normal curve of intensity. And so it starts off really low and it gets higher and higher and higher. And once it hits the peak, it goes back down again. And if we can recognize and tell our youth and teach our youth that they can handle that curve, that they can handle the peak of the anxiety no matter how uncomfortable it is, they'll start to notice it go down. And with more and more practice of tolerating and handling our symptoms, even when they're so uncomfortable, the more we realize that we can. We don't learn to handle something unless we actually handle it, unless we actually face it. So with that example, the coping skills we might apply to anxiety could apply to this situation as well. This alarm is going to go off until it runs its course. What can I do in the meantime? How can I help myself tolerate this? I could go to another room. I could put on music to drown out the siren. And the same is true with anxiety. Our coping skills, such as deep breathing, drinking glass of water, listening to music, whatever works for you, they're not there to actually get rid of the symptom. They're not there to get rid of the uncomfortable feeling. They're there to minimize it a little bit to help you handle it. So we need to teach that to our children as well, that the coping skills that we teach them and we give them aren't to get rid of, aren't to push away the uncomfortable feelings. They're to not take them down a notch so that we can handle it as it comes and as it goes. So hopefully with those messages in mind and those messages that you can share with your youth, you can help them reconsider and reframe the way they think about anxiety. There's one other important bit of information that I wanna share with you today before I start to do my reading. And that is based on a study that was conducted by Penn State University. They had uh, study participants that all had diagnosed generalized anxiety disorder. And they had these participants write down all their fears and all their worries and what happened or what didn't. 92% of the worries that were written down never happened. And of the 8% of the worries that did happen, the participants reported that they were not as bad as they had feared. And now that's even general across this group because one in every four participants had exactly zero fears realized. None, none at all. So if we can remember those helpful tips that anxiety and fear are meant to be helpful, they can get overactive and oversensitive but they're just giving us information and we can tolerate them along with now this information that most of our fears don't actually happen, then we can feel strong and powerful alongside our anxiety instead of against it. So now I'm going to read to you the very first virtual reading of Fear Not, How to Face Your Fears and Anxiety Head On.
The book is dedicated to my fabulous, fun, and impossibly posh in-laws, Angela and David. This book is for you. You make me feel like such a cherished member of the family, helping to minimize any fears and anxieties that I could have. If you're reading this book, then you might be like me with some fears and some worries that won't let you be. We are in this together, I want you to know. All kids, grown-ups too, have these fears come and go. Yes, grown-ups have fears. Can't believe it, it's true. Worries bother us all, not just me, not just you. I'll tell you the story of beating my fears. So listen up now, because I need you all ears. There were times in my life when I had a big fear. It was constantly with me. It always felt near. It would make my heart race, put my tummy in knots. It would make my head hurt. I was lost in my thoughts. My fear planted beliefs that were rooted in doubt. Oh, what if, oh, what if, all my thoughts seemed to shout. At times it was helpful. It pointed out risks. But most of the time, it just made me feel sick. So what did I do when fear entered my head? I'll tell you what didn't work. Then I'll tell you what did. I kept it a secret, which felt like protection, but I was alone without help or connection. I hoped that if I could simply pretend it was gone, that it simply would leave me alone and move on. So I tried to ignore it, tried to push it away, but this didn't work and it felt here to stay. It took over my focus and that didn't fix it. It was all I could think of. I just couldn't nix it. Then one windy day, when I noticed the breeze, I started to feel that my mind was at ease. All my senses woke up as the air passed me by I was touching and feeling the swirls of the sky. Then my smell, taste, and sight were also turned on, and most of all sound with a lovely bird's song. More aware of surroundings, something wonderful shifted. As I focused on senses, my fear, it just lifted. As my worries kept fading, I was learning with pride. There were things I could do to make fear want to hide. What did work? I will share with you now my step-by-step -step plan so that you too can do it. I know that you can. Step one. First, notice, accept, and acknowledge the fear. Now describe it out loud in a voice strong and clear. Because by voicing our thoughts, we strip fear of its power. We strengthen ourselves and then fear starts to cower. Step two. And now let's remember, this feeling will pass. It will not hang around because feelings don't last. Our nice feelings and yuck ones all act just the same. They come for a while, then they go on their way. Step three. This last step is to pick out our favorite new tool to help cope and to manage, to regain our cool. Slow deep breathing is a tool to take charge of our mind, soothing heads, hearts, and tummies leaving fears far behind. Tools could also be writing or sipping a drink, maybe drawing or puzzling or sleeping a wink. The more that I practiced, the better I got at using my tools, telling fear, I'll fear not. You can practice these steps just like I did before. I know you can do it and shout out no more.
Watch your confidence grow and big worries shrink small as you take on your fears with these steps, tools, and all. And although there are times when the fear will creep in, you are now strong and skilled and you've learned how to win. The end. Oh, just kidding. Fears aren't so scary if we don't let them be. When we face them head on, we can bravely be free. Now really the end. And at the back, Rachel's clicking through for us. You can see there's a note to parents and professionals. And then there are pages of conversation starters and discussion questions that can help you to enrich the message of the story and really start those conversations that will help drill home the messaging to our children and support them as they start to face their fears and anxieties. And this may be new to you. If you're a teacher, if you're a professional, if you're a parent, and we really need to model this for our kids as well as teaching them this information. Um, that is all I've got for you today, but I'm gonna glance through real quick and just see if there were any comments or questions to answer. Thank you, Diana. Hi, Thomas. Okay, I guess that's it. Real quick, I'll give you like a minute if you wanna type in a question or a comment that you have. Um, Fear Not, the Not So Friendly Friend is launching today and it is available on Amazon.com, on BarnesandNoble.com and Target.com, as well as my website, which is ChristinaFurnival.com slash books. And if you order from my website, I will sign it um, before I send it to you as well. So you can get an author signed copy. And um, if you'd like to know more about me and what I do or connect with me, you can find me on Instagram at this is real life mama, as well as at capable kiddos books. And you can find me on Facebook at Christina Furnival real life mama. And let's see if anyone else threw anything in. All right. I think that's it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope this helped spark some inspiration about how we can help our youth overcome and work through their fears and their anxieties, especially in just the times that we're living they're wrought with them and there's a lot that we can do to help. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you 